I'm Sebastian St. James. This index makes absolutely no sense. Every time I tune into business shows, I hear the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up by 30 points. It's down by 2%. Stop it at once. Stop, stop, stop. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is totally out of date. There's no two ways about it. It's like listening to an old person tell you that when I was a lad, I used to walk to school in bare feet and uphill in both ways. That's right. And catching cholera was good for you because it toughened your constitution. That's basically the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Dow Jones Industrial Average comes from a time when men were the only gender that was suitable to be around the boardroom and when smoking was good for you. Yeah, of course, it dries out your lungs. So what is this Dow I speak of and deride? Well, it is 30 large cap stocks in the US and it is index weighted by price. There are so many problems with the Dow, I don't know where to begin. Firstly, can the whole US market be represented by just 30 stocks? <laughs> and which 30 should we choose? Obviously not, it's ridiculous. 30 stocks to represent the whole US share market? Mm, I don't think so. Compare that with the S&P 500, which has, well, you know, 500 stocks. 30, 500, no comparison. The S&P 500 covers between 75 to 80 percent of the market, so it's fairly representational. It's only the large caps, so we're missing out on the mids and the small, but still 80 percent's not too bad. The Dow Jones covers 21.9 percent. You heard me, 21.9. That's all it represents. So basically it's an elitism club that really represents next to nobody. So with the S&P versus the Dow, which one makes more sense to you? So why do people keep talking about the Dow? Why do I hear about the Dow every time I turn on a business program? Well, it's basically because of history. In May 26, 1896, Charles Dow created the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Who was Charles Dow and what right did he have to create an index? So Charles Dow was basically the editor of the Wall Street Journal. So editor of a finance newspaper. I guess that makes sense to create an index. Was the Dow Jones Industrial Average the first index ever to be created of a US stock market? The answer is no, it was the second. The Dow Jones Transportation Index was the first. Yes, Dow Jones, he was the big boy in town when it came to creating index and basically invented the whole index market. Already we have a problem. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Dow Jones Transportation Average. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or the Dow as we call it in modern terms, it was never really representational of the whole market. It was only the industrials. Mind you, back then industrial companies took up a massive percentage of the market. This is true, but there was lots of other indexes which represented different segments. And why aren't we talking about those today? So Charles Dow created the Dow. But it's not just the Dow Industrial Average, it's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Who is Jones? Who is Mr. Jones? Or should it be Dr. Jones? Charles Dow founded a financial news bureau originally called Dow Jones & Co with colleague Edward Davis Jones. There we go. Charles and Edward founded a company together and hence the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones Industrial Average started off with just 12 stocks. That's it. It's even worse. Today it represents 30. Back then it was 12. Can you name them? Yes, I can. They were American cotton oil, American sugar, American tobacco, Chicago gas, distilling and cattle feeding, General Electric, Lackleed gas, National lead, North American, Genesee coal and iron, US leather and US rubber. So we have rubber, leather company and lead. Very healthy. So why these 12 companies? Well, they were the titans of industry back in the day. So it made sense when you had far, far, far fewer companies that you, well, you may as well represent the market based on these 12 companies. How many of those original 12 companies that started off the Dow are still in the Dow today? The answer is none. General Electric has remained in business and was a component of the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the longest period of time. So that's it. General Electric, the original company, lasted the longest. How long? 120 years in the Dow Jones until it was removed in 2019. Long live General Electric. 
Besides General Electric, which we know about, what happened to the other 11 original companies that formed the Dow? The answer is either they've been broken up and dissolved or else they've been subsumed by other companies. For example, the American Tobacco Company merged with Imperial Tobacco to form a British American Tobacco. So a US tobacco company and a British tobacco have merged. What would the Boston Tea Party think about that? Even if we accept the fallacious idea that 30 stocks can represent the entire market, there is still an embedded flaw in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and that is the way it's calculated. The S&P 500 is cap weighted, so we don't get 500 stocks and represent them equally, you know, one five hundredth each one. No, the largest companies take up the largest amount in the stock, down and down, until the tiny companies actually taking up just a sliver. Do you know that the Dow Jones Industrial Average does not work that way? How does it work? Well, it works on price. You heard me correctly. The share price is how we weight the stock. Is a share price not arbitrary though? For example, if I have a share price of $30, I have a stock split, it becomes a two for one. My share price is now worth $15. My market cap's the same. It's really just playing around with numbers, but not according to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Your share price comes down, the percentage of the index actually drops as well. Crazy talk. So if market cap actually makes sense. Size matters, but share price is kind of silly. Why was the Dow Jones Industrial Average ever based on share price and not market cap? Well, this picture will show you why. This photo was taken in 1896, the same year that the Dow Jones Industrial Average was created. And so was this photo with four lovely ladies. And this photo was also taken when the Dow Jones Industrial Average was created. Can you see why complex calculations were not high on the agenda for the Dow Jones Industrial Average? So something simpler like share price is basically what they used. Do you know that the modern Dow is still based on this flawed idea that share price matters? So we have computers today, we've had computers for many, many, many decades, but still the Dow Jones for historical reasons is still based on the share price and not a market cap. We started off with 12 stocks, now we have 30. When did this transition take place? This took place in 1928. Here is a picture from 1928 and this is what life looked like and oh, still not a computer in sight. If finance analysts are always talking about the Dow, how well does the Dow actually track the market or the S&P 500? Let's take a look. Here we have in blue the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In red we have the S&P 500. Well, they track along there for a little while. This is over the last five years until the S&P 500 takes off and leaves the Dow behind. The S&P 500 over the last five years has been 71.76% and the Dow Jones has been 54.66%. 72% the actual market, 55% the Dow. How is the Dow remotely representative of the market, I ask you? Well, the answer is it's not. So how does that say compare to the NASDAQ? If we add that in, is that more representative by the S&P 500 or, or is the Dow? In green, we have the NASDAQ Composite Index. And well, it's nothing like the S&P 500, quite frankly. And really, the Dow is closer to the S&P 500. I noticed the NASDAQ in green was actually doing better than the S&P 500. Should I be investing in an ETF in, say, the S&P 500 or in the NASDAQ? I have a video coming out on that shortly. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. If the Dow Jones Industrial Average only represents 22% of the market, what do we need to do before we can stop talking about the Dow? Well, basically, finance anchors need to stop talking about it and then it will disappear. I'm looking at you, Jim Cramer. So scrap the Dow, use the S&P 500 or the S&P Total Market Index if you want to be pedantic. Here's a graph that shows the S&P 500 versus the Total Market Index. And as you can see, they're very similar. Over the last 10 years, the Total Market Index has returned 12.08% and the S&P 500 12.39%. So really it's just the decimal places, they've both returned roughly 12%. So yeah, they are quite well aligned. But how well has the Dow done over that same period of time? 
If we add in the Dow in orange, we can see, oh, it's well and truly underperformed the market. The S&P is truly not too far from the market as a whole, but in orange, no, the Dow has only performed over that same period of time, 10.5%, the total market is 12.08%. The Dow Jones is underperforming the S&P 500, so the less we talk about it, the better. But how much does the S&P 500 actually perform over time? I've done a video on that. Go ahead and click on it now.